Hi, all. I'm Dan Smigfrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, February 23rd, 2023, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. Three hard cases for the Matterport Pro 3 camera and how to customize the foam. And our subject matter expert today to talk to us on this topic, my case builder engineering manager, Hugh Conway. Hugh, thanks for being our expert on the show today. Hello, welcome. Uh, Hugh, uh, before we jump into the three cases uh, for the Matterport Pro 3 camera, how about telling us about my case builder so we have some context for today's show? All right, so uh, we're a custom foam uh, case company. Uh, we're located in Patterson, New Jersey. We're about 50 people, so we're kind of a mid-size uh, company. Uh, we sell cases all over the North America. We also have uh, partners in Europe and Japan and uh, New Zealand that serve those markets under my case for the brand. Um, we've been in business for several decades, but my case builder has been our center of focus for about almost 10 years now. Um, you know, we got into the business originally was a packaging foam company. And then it was a empty case and packaging foam company. And uh, today we do primarily custom foam for cases. And we try to focus on uh, the more durable cases, the heavy duty cases and that type of uh, product. We're not limited to what type of products we work with. So we do drones, we do photography, we do firearms, we do just computer devices, broadcast, We've sent cases to the Olympics. We've packaged uh, relics and uh, all sorts of uh, unique items. Uh, so it's a big variety of things we do. And um, we don't find ourselves locked into any particular brand or any particular product type. So we, uh, we do cases for all of the major heavy duty brands and many medium duty and light duty uh, type cases. But we, we also offer the foam only, which is uh, one of the things that is most popular that we do, uh, because a lot of people will sell you a case and foam, but the, the heavy duty durable cases, including the ones we're gonna talk about today, really, will, they last forever. I mean, uh, when we say lifetime guarantee, and all the three cases we're gonna talk about today do have a lifetime guarantee on the case, um, that vastly outlives the contents that people originally get the case for. Whether you know they, they get a new camera, it's a new generation, or it's just you know where. So the fact that we provide a, um, a foam only replacement for any of the cases that we sell becomes a really popular thing. So people can really get the full life out of a case, not just uh, not just the particular product at that moment in time that they were looking to. Uh... Awesome. Uh, so I've heard of Pelican. How many other uh, hard case so, brands do you so carry? Pelican is the big name in cases. Um, pretty much anyone that knows about heavy duty cases knows about Pelican. There are a lot of other brands. We talk mostly about the Dora brand, which all three cases we're going to talk about today, which is our house brand. It's made by our partner in Italy. Um, we also do a lot of business with SKB which is one of my favorite brands because they have a huge variety of sizes and combinations. There's other brands, and SKB and uh, Pelican are both California cases, made in California. We also uh, do seahorse cases, which are made in California, or Nanook cases, which are made in Canada. We do a couple of European-made cases as well, like HPRC is an Italian-made case. So there's a big variety of uh, cases in the category. And we work with all of them, which is um, a kind of a key tenant that we wanted to uh, stick to is that we uh, were agnostic about your brand loyalties and all that. But what we call a heavy duty case um, meets all the same criteria as the Pelican case, which is kind of the historic gold standard that started in the, or really the seventies is when they came out with the 1970s with the, uh, the Pelican brand, and they set the gold standard for what a heavy duty case is. So you might hear me at some point today talk about an IP67 rating. 
that's a, a very popular rating about how waterproof a case is, but it ends up being a proxy for how rugged and durable that case is. And uh, because, so all the cases we're going to talk about today all will remain waterproof under a meter of water for 30 minutes. That's the testing that they go through. That, um, you know, whether you need your case to be waterproof under water for that long isn't really relevant to this conversation. What is is that it's the case is that level of durability. It's that level of craftsmanship. So when we talk about a heavy duty case, we're normally talking about something that can withstand those types of parameters, not just um, something light. So these are cases that can fall off the back of trucks. They can be thrown on UPS trucks. They can uh, be dragged around. They can be put on boats, airplanes, trains. They, they travel the world. Awesome. And I'm going to add to that, Hugh, that we get around network has a special offer for our viewers that if you use the WGAN affiliate link or any WGAN affiliate link for my case builder, uh, we will provide free 12 months WGAN TV training you in Matterport, uh, which includes over 130 hours of training from 75 instructors on 10 plus topics. It's rather comprehensive. 12 free months WGAN TV training you when you use uh, a uh, WGAN uh, affiliate link, such as WGAN.info forward slash my case builder. Um, uh, Let's talk about the three cases. I'm going to pull up what I call a, a small case first from my case builder for the Pro 3. And why don't you take us through this case? Yeah, and I'll just start by saying that particular case, this is a great example of the, we when we partnered on the Matterport 2 case, it's the same case with a different foam insert. Yeah, and so for context for, for our viewers, uh, WGN, actually myself, has worked closely with my case builder to design a case for the Matterport Pro 2 uh, camera. Uh, we did that a number of years ago, three different case options. And now we've worked closely with my case builder to create three new cases for the Matterport Pro 3 camera. So uh, you were describing that this is the same physical case that we used for the Pro 2, and now we're using for the Pro 3. Yes. Tell us about this case. So this case, it's one of my favorite. It's, uh, you have the, uh, the handle re, you know, retracted, right? It's because that's because it has wheels, so it can be rolled around pretty easily. It's, uh, it's a good weight for its uh, level of durability. It's a very durable case. It's, uh, this is one of the more rugged cases that we work with. Uh, it's made in Italy. The case is the foam is made at our plant here in Patterson, New Jersey. And uh, we've uh, we've taken a kind of basic approach to what we wanted to do. We looked at some of your members and their uh, their equipment, and we said, this is a layout that makes sense for a lot of people. In the uh, the right side there, or I guess it's my right hand, yeah. uh, we're putting the camera in the slot and we're putting, we have a recessed area for a tablet to go on right. top of it. And let me point out for, the, for that Matterport Pro 3 camera, that is the Matterport Pro 3 camera case that's nested yeah. in, and I wanna say this is, if I get this right, polyurethane foam. Yes, so the foam we're using in the base there is, uh, we call it top guard. And what it is, is a combination of a particularly high density uh, polyethylene foam top quarter inch and a standard density uh, foam underneath it. Uh, we put that extra density foam on the top and the, you know, pretty thick layer of it. We do that because uh, it has the foam wear better over time. It's more sturdy. You don't have you know, ripping issues and things. It also gives a nice glossy finish on the top. So I, I should say for those that are want to follow along on your website, uh, the affiliate link is wgan.info forward slash mppro3 
W-G-A-N-1, and that's a number one. Uh, so uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the, sl the slot for the tablet that goes above the Pro 3? Yeah, so uh, one of the things that you and I talked about and a big takeaway was that no one uses the Matterport without having a tablet with it. It's really, it's essential to it. But different users use different tablets. Right. So uh, we wanted to make a particularly big slot because a lot of people have those uh, big cases and with the hand slot was that was a big concern you had, right? You wanted people to, uh, you know, because a lot of users hold the tablet with a single hand and they got the job. So we, we went with a, a pretty big space there because we were hoping to accommodate a big variety of those types of cases on, uh, you know, various size tablets. So we, we made a recess there right above that case. So the idea is you can put the camera in the in that small soft case that comes with the Matterport and that case slides right into this big slot and then you can lay the tablet right on top of it. And uh, you know, it should fit a big variety of tablets, right? And then, and then on the left side of the case- The other cavities we that we're looking at? What? The other cavities, spaces? Yes. So then on the left side of the case, we have uh, just, it's it's three battery slots. You know, we kind of, we went back and forth about what the right number of batteries was. And we said, well, most users are gonna have two or three batteries with them. So that's how we, we landed on the, we should have three slots for batteries. It's often important for various safety reasons and things to have those is separate and not just thrown in there. But, and then we have the, the big slot that's on the side there, we call it a catch-all slot. So we thought about making little specific cavities for every type of equipment someone might have and every sort of thing. But what we realized was everyone carries different equipment with them slightly, you know, they have their own setup. And what we wanted to have was just kind of a nice size compartment that people could fill up with their right set of yeah. So so when we discussed this, we wanted to make sure that there was enough room for the quick release plate, uh, the, excuse me, the quick release clamp, the, the tripod mount piece about that big, the charger kit, uh, door stops, something else so that there's enough room put, to put something else in. But the something else didn't need to be physically protected like the camera. Yeah, exactly. It's like your door stops don't need a lot of cushioning around but you do need to have some, right? And so talk seems, a little bit about these latches on here. Well, so the latches are one of my favorite things about this particular brand of cases. All of those brands I talked about earlier, one of the major differences between all of them is the latches. And uh, Doro has what I think is one of the easiest to use latches, and it's a very reliable latch. It doesn't get jammed up even if it's... Uh, you know, the case is wet or dirty, you know, if you've got mud on it or sand, it, it operates really reliably and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt your knuckles or anything when you try to lift it. It really kind of gracefully lifts up. And if you're trying to get a little extra into that case, like your tablet is a little extra wide or, you know, the contents of that catch wall is a little extra, those latches really just kind of naturally close the case that little extra bit. Uh, you're highlighting the um, the automatic air release valve. So um, in cases in this class that are heavy duty and waterproof, you might want to bring it on an airplane or you know people bring them on submarines and things too. But um, I, I want to meet a Matterport service provider that takes a Matterport Pro 3 camera on a submarine because I is. want to come with them. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, when you have big changes in air pressure and you have a waterproof case, you know, uh, you won't be able to open the case. It, it's impossible if you bring a, a waterproof case on an airplane, for example, when you get up, it becomes impossible. To open. So what Doro does and other brands like Pelican and SKB, they put a, uh, a watertight pressure relief valve. So that is a waterproof valve that's allowing the pressure inside the case and the pressure outside the case to remain equalized. You know, uh, that way, no matter what atmosphere you're at, the case is gonna open naturally regardless. 
And if I if I live in an area where there's lots of moisture and humid, a lot of humidity. Yeah. Well, so so that you're you're referencing the desiccant, which we we added as a separate option on the uh, the checkout. And that's because certain markets, desiccant isn't really essential. And for people that don't know what I mean by desiccant, you should think about your vitamin pills that come with a little pouch in it or a little cylinder in it that's sucking up the moisture. That's what a desiccant can is. The one we're providing is a bigger can. They call it a can. It's a, it's a piece of metal. Um, but And it can be reused. It can be dried out. But if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, where they have the 10, 15% relative humidity, it's not that important. If you're in Miami, you might want to include a desiccant canister because whatever that humidity is, when you close that case, it's a watertight case. So you're locking in that moisture. So we like to recommend to people in high humidity areas to include a desiccant canister in there, or if you're using it for long-term storage, right? You know. Um, if you're putting the camera in there and you're opening and closing this case every day, you know, it's being exposed to the elements all the time. If you're closing this case and it's going to be closed for a month, the humidity at the time you close it is going to be exposing your equipment for the whole time. So a desiccant canister inside the case can help wick out that moisture and it just, it keeps your equipment in the best condition. Awesome. So when you go through the My Case Builder checkout process, that's an option if you want to add the desiccant canister. Um, uh, the second case to go over, and, and again, for those that want to follow along what I call a, a medium-sized case, uh, the WGAN affiliate link, wgan.info forward slash mppro 3 wgan 2 that's the number two. So that's this case here. So this why case is... Why don't we start with the inside first? Yeah. So, so this case is a, a little bit, a little bit smaller in some respects. Here, oh, your uh, your lid foam slant. We didn't glue that one in. You know, normally the uh, the cases that uh, your your members will be buying get glued in. This is the early uh, early sample that you're using. But uh, so here we put the uh, camera on the left hand side. And we put the ketrol and the batteries underneath the underneath the tablet or the, the tablets over it. So that's the recess on the right hand side is intended to have your ketrol cavity is the big uh, square, your three batteries and your tablet on top of it. Now, uh, this case is the lightest of the three. And the reason it's the lightest is it doesn't have wheels. So for some people, that makes the most sense. They they want uh, they're concerned about weight. They're going to be carrying it. For some people, the wheels are are the most critical. You know, uh, so, so it, I, and I think partly what we talked about is to say, okay, um, for a medium case, we really do want to provide more storage for the person that carries more stuff. So we still have the tablet there, but it's it's over the space where you put your stuff. But there's still the three. Uh, slots for batteries. Yes. Counterpart Pro 3 camera batteries. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of what we came out of this process saying is the uh, the fundamentals that people really need is they need their camera, they, they want up to three batteries, they need the tablet, and then what is most useful is to give people flexibility of generic space that they can put what they're going to be bringing. Because, you know, some people are bringing two door stops to a job. Some people are bringing four door stops to a job. You know, different people have different needs. It's the same latches on this case. The uh, the small one is a dual latch. This has four latches on the sides as well. Um, but it, it's the same latch mechanism. It's the same, uh, same plastic. Um, you know, I'll just point out the, uh, the rubberized candle. It's a... Per Particularly nice uh, feel. It's a it's a rubberized candle. It's textured, which uh, just kind of carries nicely. It has the water, the uh, pressure relief valve as well. Now I want to say the handle's the same on the small, medium, and large. Yes. Yes, it's the same yeah. rubberized handle it, on it, all. But it of does them. have a nice texture. It doesn't. It's not slippery. It's it. Uh, it's not sticky, and it's not slippery. It's not. It's not sticky, but it uh, it grips well even when it's a little wet. So if you find yourself walking through the, uh, the rain, for example, 
you're, you're not going to be dropping the case because it's a uh, it's a high a high gloss finish handle. Also, if having BNI hinge kind of lets it fold up and store away. You know, there are some cases out there that it's it's a molded in handle. It's fixed. We wanted to go with one that uh, was you know on a, a hinge. That way, it's good for storage, good for travel. A lot of the users you have here are going to be transporting around a lot. So that was the idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think you actually have an, an an acronym that includes transporting. Oh yeah, I like to use the acronym STOP. That's a store, transport, organize, protect, which are kind of the the four principles that we're trying to accomplish with this. You know, we want to be able to store this equipment in a organized way where we know it, where it is. It's transport becomes kind of the, the core of why a lot of people need a case and protect is obviously just important is why we're doing it all, right? Yeah, we have a $6,000 camera. We got a $1,000 plus tablet. Uh, uh, we have it, we're carrying around an investment we want to make sure is protected while we're transporting it. Yeah, and, and on that point, you know, something that people might not have noticed, we provided the Doro label for the brand of the case separately on a sticker inside the case. So it was optional to put it on mm -hmm. the case or leave it blank or put your own label or something else. So, you know, sometimes different people have different approaches to this, right? Some people, you know, want to put their brand, their company, they want to label the contents in that label recess. But some people really don't want to advertise to the world what it is that's inside their case, especially if a third party is the one transporting. So, okay. yeah. So this is, so let me just introduce this. This is what I consider the, the large case. Uh, and if you want to follow along on the My Case Builder website, the WGAN affiliate link is wgan.info forward slash MPPRO3WGAN3. That's three as in the number three. And I think you were just pointing out where that label is. That label shipped is separately, and I didn't put the label on the case. I liked it without any identification on it. But that's that's that you're talking about that indented space yes. uh, towards the bottom there. That's a little recessed area. Some people really like putting their company's name on it. Some people use it for labor lean, you know, the asset management, they call it. You know, uh, but other people just want to leave it blank because uh, you know, if you that, put that'll come up in a moment. Like, we'll we'll talk about that some more. I think what yeah. I wanted to show that this one was also with the if uh, yeah. in fact, I'll show you the wheels. Let's see if I can do that. You can. It's hard with the uh, the large case, but the wheels. It's uh, this case has nice wide wheels. You know, they're far apart. Was and, that uh, different than well. the small case that has the handle and wheels? The small case has handles and wheels, and the large case has handles and wheels. Are they the identical wheels, identical handles? Yes. Okay. So there's that. Let's start with the inside, and then we'll go to the outside. Yes. So we're only seeing part of the case here. You might want to pull it back a little. Here, the big difference with this case is the extra catch-all space. So we still have the camera on the right-hand side, the batteries in the front left, the tablet's laying flat in the top left, but here we have two catch rolls. The, you know, the one underneath the tablet's a nice big catch roll. We got a nice uh, deep catch roll in the front right. This is for someone that is going to have extra gear, right? They're going to have more than what the average person needs to bring somewhere. They've got some, you know, they're doing some special setups, or maybe they have some special mounts they need. And uh, this kind of just, it's just a bigger case that's more accommodating. We thought about making one really big generic space, but we said no, two would be better because you know you do want to have some protection on that stuff. You don't want to just flying around a big, big empty space. So all three of these cases have the same latches. Yes, all the Doro cases have the same approach to latches. We call that an up and over latch. It has a nice molded in grip, which you know makes it work really well. It's textured, and this is the same. Uh, the handle release for the small and the large case, which uh, you can see 
it's easy. You just uh, you can operate it with a thumb and slide it all down. It's hard to do when it's on your lap, but on the ground, it's uh, it's very easy to operate. And it's also it's a very durable latch. You know, uh, when you have it bent out, you know, if you go to the store and you buy some luggage, you pull that retractable handle out and you lay it down on a flight of stairs and step on the case, you're going to bend that handle. This one isn't going to bend like that. It's gonna it's going to be sturdy. It's a very durable, it's a molded handle. It's not some hollow aluminum tube. And uh, it's uh, pretty good. Uh, I'll point out on all the cases, we have uh, multiple lock, locking points, uh, you know, at least two in the front. Those are good for if you want to use a padlock, you know, uh, to secure, you can just lock at one point or multiple points. Some people just want to secure their things and they just use zip ties. Some people use you know, locks, you know. Um, oh. They're somewhere, okay. Uh, yeah, yes. It's, so in this case, it's here, here, and then here and here. Yeah, was, it, was it four on the two other cases? No, so the two other have two points. The, two points. The big case so. has extra. Okay, so this is the largest case. And, uh, I would say probably the two key things here is if you want a handle and you want to carry a lot of stuff. If you want a handle, but you don't want to carry a lot of stuff, that was the smaller one. And if you don't want the uh, the wheels and the handle uh, and you can get by with a moderate amount, this has a little bit of extra storage. That's that, that medium one. Um, I ha actually have a fourth case. So... This is the uh, Matterport case. And I thought we would do is talk a little bit about this case and how it's different than the three my case builder cases. So let me open up. So in fact, in fact, as I open, maybe you could talk about these latches here. Yeah, so I mean, um, I, I don't want to say bad things. About well, case, I'm, but... I, I'll say it. I just thought the latches were a little bit harder to open and they're just, I just think they're harder to open and I just concerned about that mechanism over time. So but let's talk trigger, about the inside. This well, is the, I'll, I'll just say the two things that I don't like about trigger latches and some of my favorite brands have trigger latches, but in general, there's two concerns. One is that mud or sand or things can cause it to jam and be difficult. The other is exposure to water over time, the, uh, the spring inside can get rusty and it can make it operating different. So the trigger latches don't really um, perform as well over time as that up and over latch. Okay, so let's talk about inside. So Matterport uh, has uh, slots for the battery, then they have slots for uh, door stops. And they also have a slot for the quick release plate and and I, I want to say one of those slots is for the charging kit, though I'm actually not sure. Um, so I, when I looked at this case, my concern was two things. One is you're, you're not, you don't, there's no room for a tablet. Yeah. And, and I thought that was really important because if you're a Matterport service provider and you do this for a living, you have a dedicated tablet and you're only using it to do Matterport scanning. You're, it, it's not the... Uh, used for anything else other than scanning. And so you have to carry your tablet with you and and that's something to be protected. And there's there's no place in this case to carry a tablet. Uh, the other thing is I thought this was a lot of space protecting door stops. So uh, I, I guess if, if you want to be, you know, super organized and you know that you've taken your door stops home at night because that you got to fill up those slots, you know, maybe this case is for you, but I thought it was like, there's a lot of storage that's used for things that don't need to be protected that can, and so, yeah, you were going to say. So, so this gets kind of um, a big part of the ethos of our company is, you know, custom, right? We want people to tailor products to their needs, right? And uh, what Matterport's doing here is they're saying, this is what you need for your setup. But you know that, all of your users, they're gonna have different setups. And you know that's why we went with the generic space. 
we said give people the maximum volume don't tell them what they need to bring to the job and you know you know that that's kind of the approach and we'll get into it with when we do the demo of my case beliefs app as well but okay. it's just kind of our approach has been let people decide what they need in the best way yeah i mean and the other thing is the matterport logo is on here so uh you know, if, if you don't mind advertising Matterport and maybe calling to attention, oh, there's another, oh, you use Matterport? Maybe I can go find a, somebody that charges a nickel less that does Matterport. So uh, personally, I would rather not advertise Matterport. If I was going to put a brand here, it would be my company, it wouldn't be their company. Uh, that's that's not coming off. And again, I, I still have a concern about uh, Matterport competing with service providers uh, with various services, and all we're doing here is advertising Matterport. So that was kind of a turnoff for me. Um, what about, is, is there any thoughts on, uh, could you tell from what I'm showing you, is there a difference in the kind of foam? So I can't tell you exactly what that foam is. To me, it looks like a cross-linked uh, polyethylene, a, a chemically cross -linked. You, know, you you might be able to tell if it has like a slight ammonia smell to it or something. Yeah, I, I actually have a cold today, so I can't, it, I don't smell anything. So, uh, uh, so, so that's an okay foam. Uh, I mean, what we're doing with the Top Guard foam, I think is kind of my preferred way to package things. As a company, we sell all sorts of foam. Uh, we work with all sorts of foam, including foams like that. But uh, you know, we selected the uh, the Top Guard foam because, and it's named Top Guard because the top surface is that extra durability. You know, when you're moving things, taking things in and out, like a lot of your users are going to be using every day or multiple times a week. You know, uh, the uh, the foam wears around the top edges, and that's where you it tears, and that's where you end up with a year or two down the road. You're saying I just got a bunch of you know debris in the case, right? So the, the top guard kind of, uh, it prolongs the life of it. It's that, that durability is my favorite thing about it. It's also, it's just a nice, attractive looking foam. Okay, uh, Hugh, in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to do a demo of uh, how to do customized foam with my case builder. But before we do that, I just wanna add some of, of my impressions. Um, you know, I would say the Matterport case for the Matterport Pro 3 camera and accessories is is fine. You'll do okay. Um, the challenge is, is, you know, three years from now, you get a, a Matterport Pro 4 camera. It's a different fit. Uh, you may not be able to go find somebody to create foam for the Matterport case to reconfigure it. Yes. If you buy a case from my case builder, then you're going to have a template uh, that can be used to reconfigure the case. I, I think as, as Hugh, as you pointed out, your cases last like forever and, mm -hmm. and technology doesn't last forever. And it's likely that at some point you're going to want to reuse the case, reconfigure the case for a different solution. And so you, buying a case from my case builder gives you that flexibility. You'll show us the demo shortly. Yeah. We're going to, you know, that foam insert is going to be glued into the case. It's going to be there durably. But, you know, three years from now, five years from now, you might want to rip that out and you just go to our website and you don't have to buy a whole case in foam. You just buy a replacement foam insert. And that can be a custom designed insert or it can be a pre made one that for some future product that we don't even know about yet. Yes. So but, whether it's a Matterport Pro 3 camera, a DSLR camera, a drone, some uh, some other form of photography, uh, you want it configured differently. Uh, that's why I think it's really helpful to, to, to see the demo that you're going to do. But before you do that, Hugh, I still wanted to point out for Matterport service providers, uh, you know, well, how do you make a decision on, on buying a case? We, we've given you a lot of information to help you decide. Uh, when I originally had the conversation with, with you about designing cases for a Matterport Pro 3 camera, uh, the, the things that were important to me was first, options. That's why there's three. 
Second was to have an option, at least one of the cases include wheels and a handle because that would differentiate for some photographers going to say, no, I don't want to carry a case. I want it on wheels. So that kind of makes Matterport's case irrelevant and you have two options on wheels. The, the second was to be able to protect not only the Pro 3 camera, but to protect the iPad and to have the iPad area large enough to accommodate whatever case is, is enclosed on the iPad so you don't have to keep removing the outer case. And a third was in terms of storage, which, which was to say, okay, well, some people are minimalists. I just want to take the minimum amount of gear within the case that I need. And some like to carry more stuff. And maybe somebody like me likes to carry a lot of stuff. And therefore, I wanted to have that extra storage. So if you if you're want wheels and a handle, there's two options from my case builder. If you want uh, more storage. Uh, there's the medium and large case and with lots of storage. Yeah, I, I just, I want to reemphasize how durable that retractable handle is. You know, there's a lot of cases out there with retractable handles and a lot of them are really sturdy, but not all of them are. And we, we wanted one that was really sturdy. I, I think you had said at one point, well, someone might have a bag and they'd want to be able to put the bag on there and wield the case and bag in to get it. And you know you have a nice big flat surface that you can press a box or a bag against, and when you're reeling it, you can really transport a lot more than just the case with that. You know it becomes a, a dolly. Yeah. Having that solid plus, it, it's it's a very sturdy retractable handle. All right, awesome. You want to sh show us how to customize foam with the my case builder solution? Uh, yes, just give me a moment to see if I can share my screen. So while he's doing that, again, I've, give, I've given you four different affiliate links. It might sound a little bit confusing. So if you just want to go to wgan.info forward slash my case builder, uh, uh, just below that word where it says contact us, there's a little uh, magnifying glass. You can search for Matterport and you will get three, what'll pop up are three Matterport Pro 3 cases and three Matterport Pro 2 camera cases and also a template example. All right, so you're going to show us an example uh, of how to customize foam. Uh, yes. So I, I'll just point, this is our landing page. Um, if you go to the pre-made designs and you can Look up cameras, Matterport will be there, or you can just search Matterport, you know, um, and when you find something, you can open the application. I, I've opened our application. I've just opened a design file. Okay, so th this one I can tell just looking at it, this is the Matterport Pro 2 camera case that includes in this example, uh, I see the iPad uh, it was a smaller version of an iPad because this was done many years ago. Uh, and so let's say you wanted to take uh, that iPad and lay it flat as opposed to have it lay into a slot. Yeah, I forget. I think we did this in 2018, 2019. I, I can't remember. But this was the Matterport 2 case we did. Uh, it was in a IM2620, which is a, a Pelican brand uh, case. Pelican has several different products. Um, and this was the big shape for that Matterport Pro 2, which was a much bigger camera. The Matterport Pro 3 is it's much nicer, compact size. And we just had a, a, a generic storage space here, and we had that tablet sliding straight in. Now, if you go into the edit, there's, there's two little slots vertical, those, those are to these grab are the finger it. notches to slide finger it notches. Out. So this okay. was your tablet. This was that relief for a, a back uh, clasp and then uh, finger notches to slide it out easy. Um, so this was kind of our simple approach of handling the Matterport, the Matterport 2. And uh, but so you can go in and say, I don't want to buy that case as is. I want to edit it, right? You know, customize this foam is the, the name of the link. So you might say, oh, you know, I want to make this cavity a little bigger or something like that, right? But 
perhaps what you really want to say is my tablet is, isn't going to fit in there. I, that's not how I want to store it. So I'm just going to delete it. I just click delete. I want to store it flat like we've done with these Matterport three cases. I want to put it over my catch-all here. And I said, well, this case is eight inches deep in the base. So I can make this right here a little bit deeper. You know, maybe I make it seven inches deep. And I want to put my my tablet on top of it. So I can just say, well, what size I'd measure, right? I'd get a measuring tape or a ruler. I'm going to say my tablet is, say, seven inches by 11 inches. And even though it's only uh, like three eighths of an inch thick, I'm going to have it in a case with the handle on the back. I'm going to make my cavity one inch deep. And uh, I'm going to have finger notches on the top and the bottom. So this is my kind of uh, my very unusual uh, specialized tablet. I just lined it up so that I'm over that cavity there. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, click this merge button to make my shape real nice, and I, I can just show you in the 3D what it's gonna look like now. So now I've kind of done the same thing where I've got a big cavity here, and I've put a uh, a nice flat space to lay my my tablet that I just measured up, and I put in finger notches to make lifting that tablet out a little more easy. Now I can do other things with this. So we could uh, we could do lots of modifications. I can add circles and ovals. I could also go into uh, my library, and uh, you know. I'll just look at the, the public library here and say for some reason I needed to add this camera lens to it because this isn't just a, a Matterport case to me. This is going to be a photography case and I need to transport with that lens. In our library, I'll just point out, we have uh, 7,860 different shapes. They, you know, they come in all different categories from audio, binoculars, Cameras, camera lenses, drones, tablets, firearms. We see some of those down here. Printers, lots of different types of equipment. You know, video game consoles, tools. You know, astron uh, astronomy is a popular topic. People. Like All right, to Hugh, I, I'm I'm going to stop you there. The 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 I think the the, the takeaway oh, is you can customize the foam if you want. Yes. There's likely an existing template for a lens or a camera or a drone. And if there's not, there's a way cool uh, tracing tool also. Yeah, the photo um, tracing. But rather than really do a deep dive on this, you can go look at the videos, training videos uh, uh, on the My Case Builder website, wgan.info forward slash uh, My Case Builder, uh, all one word. And uh, I, I want to say we've we've showed or teased how to customize foam, um, but we uh, we worked really hard to come up with three cases that would really solve the needs of Matterport service providers using a Matterport Pro 3 camera of whether they wanted wheels and a handle or whether they wanted more storage or whether they wanted wheels and a handle and even more storage. So, uh, or even for those that are price sensitive, it turns out that one of your cases is actually uh, costs less than Matterport. Not by much, but you know, you, you want something that's that I think is better and costs less, uh, uh, we've given you that option. So I, I just want to take a moment to highlight our, our customer service because that's something we really pride ourselves on. Um, we have a, a really customer focused service team. And, uh, and part of the reason I'm saying that is because if you have a special situation, you want this foam in a different case and you don't know how to do it, you can't figure out how to make our app work, there's a lot of options to you. One of the simplest options is to just go to our website and in the bottom right is our phone number. And if you call that, you'll be speaking with one of our customer service team members that are here in Patterson, New Jersey, and they're very familiar with the app. They're very familiar with our whole design team, 
our factory, our capabilities, all of our stuff. And uh, and they'll just they'll take however much time you need with them. They'll talk you through your product, your design. They'll answer your questions. If they don't have the answer, they'll take your number and they'll get back to you pretty quickly. You know, or if you really want to get even more help with a custom design, they can help you schedule a pro design service, which is a you know a, a free service we offer. You can schedule it on the website or on the phone with someone. That's a, a 30 minute you know screen share where you can share your screen with a member of our team who will look at you know what's going on. They'll give you pointers, tips. They'll help you solve problems, and uh, and that's a really great service. It's not instantly available. You know, uh, it's normally uh, booked for a couple of weeks out. The pro design service, but the phone. If you just pick up and call, I, I find almost everyone can really get all their answers uh, solved by calling or emailing. It's the same team that uh, answers all of them. And, you know, the, the, the cases that, that uh, the, the, the foam that you've used for the three Matterport Pro 3 camera cases, this polyethylene foam, uh, a lot of us have heard of pick and pluck. Can you talk about the difference between the two and why? We're using polyethylene foam for the Matterport Pro 3 camera cases. Well, so pick and pluck, which for people that don't know, that's you know, some people call it diced or cube foam. Some people call it pick and pluck. Uh, it's just, it's a urethane foam. It's a soft foam, kind of a spongy foam. Um, it's normally, uh, it's a ether foam, which is kind of different than the soft foam in the lid. We use a, a premium ester foam in our lid. Um, but the, the standard is this um, kind of this urethane foam that uh, it's die cut, and we we sell this too, you know, when people need it, uh, with little cubes that you can pluck away, and it comes in layers. So we fill up, we fill up the case with several sheets of these little, little cube knit together foam that you can pull away the pieces and outline it, and you customize it yourself. I would say if you want to do that, you can, but a better solution would be to, you know, go on our app and have it, you know, custom water jet cut with our precision curves and just form fitting. But so what that foam is, though, is uh, you, you can think about in foam, there's two types, really. There's open cell and closed cell. An open cell is going to behave like a sponge. If you put it in the sink, it's going to suck up the water. It's going to sit below the water level, right? While uh, the closed cell foam, which is the polyethylene foam we're talking about, it's more like a life jacket. If you put it in the sink, it's going to float. It's going to float above because this, the bubbles, you know, the foam bubbles are closed. They're mm -hmm. not just an uh, open pattern. And there's lots of reasons that matters, but one of the most important ones is smell. You know, I talked about humidity before. Well, that open cell sponge, what happens to a sponge that's, you know, just sitting out for a long time? You know, moisture goes in and out of it it begins to get a little smelly over time. It also can tear really easy. We've gone with the polyethylene, which isn't gonna suck up moisture. It's not gonna get smelly over time. It is a lot more of a durable foam. It's gonna last longer. It's not gonna tear. You know, um, it, so that was the, the thought process behind selecting that. I, I'm, I'm guessing when it came out, it was a good solution at the time, but, but now that you can, is this stuff laser? This is polyurethane. Is this laser cut? It's a, it's water jet cut, actually. It's a, Sorry, it's geez. water? Water jet cut. Um, That's amazing. But, uh, yeah, and, so... And what, what, if you just, if I go back to this case, I mean, this this foam feels pretty stiff. Can, can you talk about what you're protecting? I mean, what kinds of things, what kind of movements cause problems? So there's... There's two main concerns that people run into. There's lots of different ones, but the two main ones are, you know, shock. That's like if you drop the case, bam, and there's vibration. That's if you're shaking the case, right? So the best way to deal with shock is to hold something really sturdy. You know, you want to be bearing on all the points. You want it form fitting and you want a, a firmer foam to deal with. So that's the, the polyethylene we went with. Now we did put ester foam in the lid. If you notice, and it's got it's called convoluted foam, but you know, lots of people call it egg crate foam. Now we did that for vibration. 
you know, uh, because if you have items in there and they're bouncing around a little bit, that's going to help soften the vibration, dampen the vibration. And with the electronics, you don't want a lot of vibration. But when we were thinking about this case and the way it be used, you know, um, the most likely problems it's going to incur is a drop. It's going to be on the back of a truck or a trunk and it's like it's lifted up, someone slips or lets go, drops it down. It's going to be on the loading dock of somewhere someone pulls it, drops down, gets put on a FedEx or UPS vehicle and they're rough with it. They toss it. You know, um, cases for lots of reasons end up getting dropped. And uh, we wanted to pick a phone that was kind of best suited for if a case was going to drop from about two feet, three feet, you know, that we wanted to optimize protecting that condition. Because you don't think about that happening, but it will over the life of your use, especially if you're a professional that's going out every day using this, especially if you're going to be at construction sites or job sites or any kind of, um, you know, not ordinary environment your hazards exist and your likelihood of a drop or a fall so, are much higher. So correct me if I'm wrong, if if I'm thinking, okay, I just bought a $6,000 camera, I got a $1,000 plus iPad, and I got at least $7,000 in gear. Uh, oh, maybe I can Google what's the cheapest case out there. And I think my takeaways from hearing you is, is first, you, you, wanna, you wanna protect your investment uh, and, and that means polyurethane rather than pick and pluck is going to do a better job. Second, uh, over time, that that pick and pluck is going to smell because it's going to absorb odors. It's also going to fall apart, right? And at, at three, it's going to fall apart. So if you know, you're going to just end up getting another case in short order. So you're either protecting, uh, help, help me out, stop. Uh, stop. Store, transport, organize, protect. I love that. Store, yeah. transport, organize, and protect. If you really want to, like, if you're buying a case, you want to, you want to, you want to keep it safe. Uh, and I'm just concerned that some Matterport service providers might say, "Oh, I've spent every last dollar I got on my Matterport Pro Three camera, my iPad. I'm just going to go look for the least expensive, pick and pluck, tiniest camera case." And uh, it's it's likely over the, the lifetime of your camera, you're not going to be happy. You're going to end up buying another solution. So just buy the right solution to start with. Yeah, Pick and Puck was a great solution when it first came out. There wasn't an option. But like I said, my case builder, we've it's been less than 10 years. It's you know really around 2013 when you know well, the owner of the company had this idea, this vision of that we could provide custom cut foam. Uh, the quantity of one to people, and um, it's and awesome. And 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 this is not a drop ship. You have a factory. How, I, I've sent a picture of it. How how big is your factory? Oh, I I don't want to say the square footage. I forget. I forget it off the top of my head. It's a big plant. You know, we have a. Multiple, I, I want to say it's at least forty thousand, if not sixty thousand square feet. I, it's I think big. it's in the forty thousand range. Forty thousand. It's a it's a big manufacturing facility to do this. Uh, precision water cut custom foam and to store all the cases and be able to ship the cases out. So I, I want to say that because you're you're not like a drop ship on Amazon or something where the person oh, selling no. it to you is not the person that made it. You are actually have a, a big factory in uh, Patter in uh, Patterson, New Jersey, where you're doing all this stuff in in order to take care of uh, f photographers like Matterport Pro Three cameras. Providers. Yeah, that's definitely the case, uh, the situation, because the case that we're making, it's our partner that's uh, doing the molding of the case in Italy. We've been working with them for many years, uh, very close relationship. And, and, and that, uh, that's the Doro brand the, the that Doro you've brand. selected for the Matterport Pro 3 camera case. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if somebody says, gee, I like that configuration, but I still like Pelican. Uh, oh, yeah, we could do it in, in any brand, right? You, you, so there, there are literally dozens, I want to say, brands that my case builder could fulfill, but we, we picked an economic rock solid brand, not for someone that was necessarily looking for the brand name, but was looking for the, the functionality of transport and protect 
uh, well, their we, investment. We did. And in fact, for the pre-made design, since we have some economy of scale, we offer slightly better pricing than if you were to get a custom one in the same case. Yep. Similar, but it's slightly uh, slightly better if you just go with the, the pre-made configuration. Okay. But uh, I'm going to repeat. We're fabricating here, just to be clear. You know, uh, the, we're, we're marrying the case and the foam together as we fabricated here. We, we have a pretty big team of about 50 people. Awesome. Uh, I want to re, uh, re, reiterate that if you buy a hard case from my case builder and use a WGAN affiliate link, such as WGAN.info forward slash my case builder, you will receive 12 months free WGAN TV training you in Matterport. It's 130 plus hours of training, 75 plus instructors, 10 plus topics. All you need to do is email me your receipt after you've used the WGA and affiliate link. Just send it to Dan Smegrod at WGAN-TV.com. Um, Hugh, is there anything that we didn't cover that we should talk about? Uh, I feel like I've been talking a lot. Uh, um, no, I, I, I think uh, we did a pretty good case overview. Awesome. Uh, we've been uh, we've been visiting with my case builder engineering manager Hugh Conway uh, for Hugh in Patterson, New Jersey. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN TV.